Believe it or not, it's week four of the high school football season, which means conference play. Time to separate the men from the boys, and we're going to do that right here on Football Friday Night. I'm Jacob Seuss. And I'm Jonathan Acosta. When you look at conferences across the state, there are a few that are more competitive than the 7A West. And tonight, a battle of two teams with dreams of taking the whole thing. Yeah, an easy choice for our 5 News Game of the Week. So we head to Fayetteville, where the Purple Dogs play and host to Bentonville West in a big one to kick off conference play. And when we show you these, our highlights tend to mostly be offensive. So let's give the defense a little love. First Wolverine drive, they march right down the field, but Ben don't break. Noah Jansky with the huge sack to keep this one scoreless. But Wes says our guys can play too. Nowhere to go for Drake Lindsay, and Aiden Honeycutt chases them down for the sack. We head to the second quarter, tied at zero. Wes sends the house, so Lindsay, he just dumps it off to Jason Delamar, and here we finally have a score. He does the rest. Turns on the Jets, Fayetteville up 7-0. And then we have some more defense. West looking to respond. Landon Jones, though, breaks through and gets the sack. That leads to another Fayetteville score. Lindsey, he's going to do what he's been doing all week. Throws a dart to his new favorite target, Kalon Morris. No one around him. Fayetteville, they open 7A play where they left off last season. Final score, 42-28. to Teams might want to cover that Morris guy. We'll keep it in the 7A West. Benville opening conference play against Harbor. And how about this for a way to start the game? Opening drive, third play from scrimmage, hand off to Josh Ficklin, and the blink of an eye, Harbor's looking at the back of his jersey. 73 yards to the house, and it was a quick 7-0 lead for the Tigers. Harbor's first possession on offense, Luke Buchanan looking to throw. He goes over the middle to Hayden Wood. The sophomore makes a tough grab and moves his sticks, and yeah, he's fired up. You point that finger for the first down. Love to see that emotion, but Benville would pull away in this one. Carter Nye rolling out, goes back across the field to Eli Brooks in the end zone, the tight end comes down with the touchdown. Bentonville opens conference play with the dub 45 17, and the Tigers are 3 1 on the season. All right, so we move on. Greenland playing host to Charleston, looking to pull off the upset the Pirates were. Charleston's Brandon Scott, he's going to hand it off here to Brevin Ketter. Quickly tackled by Greenland. The Pirates defense looking good early. Max Meredith gets a stop, but then Scott, nice pass here to Eli Huck and the Tigers were moving the sticks. Charleston up big at this point, but Greenland trying to get themselves back in at Max Meredith, one of the best quarterbacks in the state. Big run here, tackled just at the 35, but Charleston, they would go on to get another big win. Tigers move to 1-0 in conference play, knocking off the Pirates 41-7. Shiloh Christian starting life in the 5A West tonight as they welcomed Dardanelle. We'll start with the home squad. Saints with the ball, Eli Wisdom, a quick pass out to Tasker Singleton, and he's going to easily pick up the first down, Great 10 eight. yards and wait more. Just staying alive, staying inside the... Uh, the sidelines and picking up the first down. Shiloh sticking with the air attack wisdom, throwing it to Bodie Neal. That moves the sticks as well, and he's going to put Shiloh well inside the red zone, and they will eventually find Pater. Wisdom with the handoff to Bo Williams, who busts through the pile for the touchdown, and the Saints are on the board. And you know this Shiloh offense, they are able to move that ball up and down the field all game. Wisdom, quick toss to Cameron Ariano. He's going to juke, he's going to dance, he's maybe taking some salsa dance, dancing classes or something, picks up the first down, and then that worked so good that they're going to do it again on later on the drive. Again to Ariano, and this time he's going to get all the way in for the Shiloh touchdown. They wind up going for two. Wisdom, he's going to keep it on the QB keeper, and he's able to walk in easily. The Saints fire up the grill and put up a 50-burger tonight. 55 to nothing as Shiloh starts life in the 5A West with a win. Yeah, Shiloh's going to struggle in the 5A, they said. <laughs> Greenwood hosting Van Buren. Pointer strike first. Cameron Keller, look at him go. Cuts to the outside. 35-yard touchdown run. Van Buren. Up 7-0 in this one, and they're up 24-14 as we move on to the second quarter. But here comes the Bulldogs. Hunter Houston to LJ Robbins. What a grab in front of the end zone, and he gets in before halftime. We're tied at 21, but Greenwood says no, no. We want more. Van Buren looking to score. Quarterback scrambles, but there is Evan Williams. Gets the pick at around the 15, and look at that man go. Do it? Breaks one tackle, crosses the 50. Yeah, you bet he's going to do it. No one's catching Williams. We love to see a linebacker with speed all the way to the house. Greenwood. 
birthday, we use a big second half to knock off the pointer, 63 to 21. That's back-to-back 60-point -back efforts for Greenwood. That offense and defense looks like they're rolling. Looking at taking a look at the scores, Panama puts up 45 in a win over Porter. Poto 44. So big offensive nights for those Oklahoma schools as well. Two teams that have really impressed so far and took it into conference play. You have the Lavaca Golden Arrows knocking off Cedarville and Gentry. The Pioneers taking down Huntsville 49 to 13. Two teams that have been a bit of a surprise so far this season, but look super good. Gentry looked pretty good last week against P. Ridge. They followed that up with another good performance against Huntsville. Those Pioneers are looking solid. We're just getting started here. When we return, a battle of the unbeatens. West Fork playing host to Man Mansfield. Highlights from that one and a whole bunch more. That's coming up when Football Friday Night returns. Welcome back into Football Friday Night. Last week it was Mansfield taking our five news game of the week, moving the Tigers to 3-0. Tonight they took a trip to West Fork to take on the 3-0 Tigers, a must-see matchup to begin conference play in the 3-A-1. Two of the best teams that we've had so far this year. That mascot's a little scary. Sorry, West Fork. Cole Kindle hands off here to Fisher Wisely, Mansfield looking good early. They had a 12-7 lead. Here, Kindle, he's going to hit Peyton Morton into the end zone for another Mansfield touchdown. They looked real good, those Tigers. West Fork, though, looking to get themselves back in the game with a little defense. There goes that Tigers defense. Luke Baldwin and Robbie Carroll bring them to the ground. But at the end of the day, it was Mansfield moving to 4-0. Both these teams should have very successful conference play. 18-14 your final. Next, we head back to the 7A West, where it's been another fast start for Rodgers, going 3-0 and scoring at least 49 points in all three wins. Now the Mounties look to keep that offense going strong into the start of conference play. And the Mounties got to start 7A West play at home, taking on Southside. Rodgers meant business tonight. Mavs quarterback Graham Harrell looking for an open guy. Instead, it's linebacker Ashton Alston who ends up with it. The interception sets up the Mounties with great field position and they immediately would take advantage. Dane Williams back to throw and he's just going to float this one on over to Mabry Verser. Touchdown Mounties. Folks, it was 35 to nothing heading into the half. Southside was able to move the ball a bit better in the second half though. Here they hand it off to Isaac Gregory picking up the first down in the ground but in the end it was all Mounties. 35-7 the final. They're undefeated 4-0 for the first time since 2012. Huge home date next week with Fayetteville. All right, those Mounties looking good. Next, we have Springdale playing host to Rogers Heritage. Both those teams needing a win to start 7A play. And Jack Pounders, he wants it. Nice pass here to Chris Cortez. Nice catch, nice move. He gets the Red Dogs deep into Rogers Heritage territory. And then Tejon Sparks is going to finish it off. Cuts to the outside. Sparks in for the score. Next up, Rogers Heritage looking to do some damage. Carter Hensley, it's been a good start to the year for him. He finds J.J. Lockett. Nice first down run. War Eagles moving. Hensley again here. Nice pass over to Persian Austin. He gets down to about the 30-yard line. War Eagles knocking on the door. Hensley once again looking sharp here. Nice pass waiting in the end zone for the touchdown. Score Rogers Heritage, but it's Springdale who comes out tonight and gets the 7A win. 40 to 28 your final score. And when we return, two teams looking to bounce back this week in Key Ridge with the Blackhawks hosting Prairie Grove. Still more to come here on Football Friday Night. Not done yet. Next up on Football Friday Night, we head to the 4A1, one of the most intriguing conferences we have this year. That's for sure. A conference with a lot of talent and with Shiloh making the jump to the 5A this year, it's a conference that's now up for grabs. Yeah, a lot of teams thinking they can win it this year. So we're going to head to Elkins, where the Elks playing host to Gravit tonight to see who could get an early upper hand. And we're going to find out real quick in this one. Elkins offense going to work in the first quarter. You've heard this name plenty of times before. Doesn't look like there's much going on. And out of nowhere, there goes Deshaun Shares to the 30, the 20, the 10. You know the drill. 60-yard score. Elks take a 7-0 lead. And how about Dizzy Dean coming over from Greenwood? He's had a great start to the year. He's going to head to the air and coming down with it. A wide-open Aiden Williams sheds the tackle. Does a little trot into the end zone. Elkins. 
They're going to take this one big, getting off to a nice start in conference play. They knock off Gravit 28 to 14. Up in Benton County, we had Prairie Grove on the road visiting Pea Ridge, and we're going to pick up the action in the first quarter. Prairie Grove with the ball. Camden Patterson here throwing it to Connor Wetzel, and he's moving. He's looking for the sticks, looking to pick up the first down, and he does exactly that. Second quarter, Blackhawks with the ball now. Gavin Dixon handing it off to Seth Foster, and the Pea Ridge offense is on the march. 7.35 left in the half. He hands it off again to Foster, and this time he's getting in for the touchdown. Blackhawks take the lead with that score, 10 to 7. We'll keep it in the first half. Prairie Grove now with the ball. Patterson throwing to Ethan Miller, a five news athlete of the week this season. He scores the touchdown. Prairie Grove back on top 14 to 10. Next up, Patterson handing it off to Miller. Miller able to pick up some yards as it's another win for Prairie Grove in this one. They go on the road and take it 48 to 31. Prairie Grove looking real good so far this season. And let's see what else we got. Roland and Vianne, two teams that are going to go head to head next week. So one of them will get a conference loss next week. But for now, both teams want to know. And then if you look at the bottom right of your score, another Oklahoma school, Pocola. Look at that, 54 to 6. If you want to talk about an emphatic victory, well, that's the way you do it. Uh, quick math says 48-point victory for Pocola. I think they'll take that. Yeah, our Oklahoma team's on that right side of the scoreboard. Looking pretty strong. Farmington did take the loss tonight. That sets up a big one for them at home next week. They're going to take on undefeated Alma. And Farmington desperately going to need a conference win to avoid falling to 0-2. And now with Shiloh in the 5 you have such a group of talented teams in that conference. You have Alma, you have Farmington, you have uh, Shiloh. I almost feel like I'm, I'm missing one team. I mm -hmm. hate to leave anyone out, but th th that's a competitive. We've talked about the 7A West. We've talked about the 4A one. There's a lot of other really good conferences with that 5A West being one of them. All right, Jonathan, that's going to pretty much wrap us up here in week four. We need to go to bed soon because we're leaving for Dallas in the morning. Go